My guest today is Kevin Griffin. Kevin, how you doing? David, so good to see you again, friend. It's so good to have you back on the show, my friend. Definitely. Uh, what do you do again? I uh, run a software consulting company called SwiftKick. SwiftKick. Was that Swift always Kick. the name of your company? No, I uh, I rebranded about a year or so ago. Okay, I didn't hear and that. News. Yeah, SwiftKick. It's uh, the idea is give your team or your project a swift kick in the pants. Yes. <laughs> So it, it works out well. It was available as a domain. So mm -hmm. it's swiftkick.in. <laughs> swiftkick.in. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, let's talk about Signal R. Signal R. Because I remember it was like five years ago. You were on the show. I think it was here in Sandusky, Ohio. It might have been. And we talked about Signal R. And um, it's evolved since then, hasn't it? It has. Uh, so I think last time we talked about it, we talked about it in terms of, uh, let's say, ASP.NET Classic. Okay. So not not ASP not Classic core, or Classic ASP, but ASP.NET Classic. And yeah, it's ASP.NET before .NET Core was a thing. All right. And it's really revolutionized how uh, .NET developers could build real-time web applications. Mm -hmm. So it took advantage of new technology like WebSockets, which was a new thing back then. Right. And today is just something that we expect. Every application uses WebSockets. Um, so .NET Core came around, and there was much rejoicing. Everyone loved it. .NET Core 2 came around, and there was much rejoicing, except for the folks that wanted to use SignalR. David, we couldn't use SignalR because the, the library wasn't ported over to .NET Core. Um, now, frankly, uh, you have to imagine if you're a member of the ASP.NET team, you're a little bit busy right. because you are kind of building something from scratch. Right. And, you know, Not SignalR got... An entire ecosystem pushed, is what they're building. Absolutely. Uh, SignalR got pushed pushed off. And they... Actually, what they did was they took the old SignalR and they wrote some wrappers and they ported it to, uh, to ASP.NET Core. And it worked. Mostly. Mostly. Uh, I actually deployed it in a client's application, and it worked well enough. Uh, but it wasn't as good as a, a version built for ASP.NET Core. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, back in September last year, I'm losing, I'm losing track of my time. But they released the, the, the full release of SignalR for ASP.NET Core. Okay, is um, it just a feature for feature port or do they add enhancements to it or what? No, they've added a couple new enhancements. Uh, let's, let me think of the most critical ones for people out there watching. Uh, the big thing is that they've added support uh, for what they call their SignalR server for, for Azure. Um, or their, uh, I don't remember what the official name is, but it's a uh, SignalR for, it's SignalR service for Azure. Okay. Which so this is, is kind of a hub for yeah. uh, applications to communicate with one another. What, what's useful is when you do SignalR, you have, there's a couple things you have to take into consideration around scaling. And if you're deploying to Azure and you're using WebSockets, the, the guidance is that you're supposed to use a thing called sticky sessions. So that means when I connect to a server uh, through a load balancer, uh, if I'm running three nodes up in Azure, well, I'm just always going to connect to a single node. Uh, in a scaled s scenario, that's not the best way to go because what happens if one of those nodes go goes down or it's uh, experiencing some lag or <laughs> all the traffic's going to a single node? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of defeating the purpose of a load balancer. Okay. Well, that's a requirement with SignalR if you're hosting it yourself. Uh, with SignalR service, you're taking your servers out of the equation and all the SignalR traffic, all the WebSockets go directly through SignalR hosted in Azure. And then those calls get redirected to your application. So now we can have a true scaled scenario okay. where my, my poor application doesn't have to worry about all this WebSocket traffic or, or there's other protocols for connecting, uh, but you, we take that traffic off of our, our machines, 
and we put it directly on Azure. Okay, so not only are you letting some of the machines handle the traffic, but you're also letting some other engineers worry about a relatively hard problem yeah. of load balancing that traffic. Absolutely. You can, do that, you can do that yourself if you hosted yourself, but that's a lot of work. It is. It's probably not directly related to whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Yes. Um, so that's a brand new feature. Uh, the next new feature that I've been experimenting a lot with is a feature called streaming. And anyone out there who's written a, an application with SignalR knows there's, there's this thing called traditional hubs. So when I connect to my SignalR service, I, I can make calls on the server just like I would make calls locally as a, as a regular function. Well, let's imagine, David, I, I make a call and that call is going to pull down 100,000 rows of data. Okay. Um, it's a lot of data. It's a lot of data. Well, with, tra with traditional hubs, it's just, it all comes down mm -hmm. at, at one bit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really the most efficient way to, right. to do things. Uh, so the team implemented this feature called streaming, which lets me on the server side send back data in chunks. Okay. Um, so I can start sending data back before maybe all the data is loaded from, so a, from maybe, a data source. Maybe the UI could load. 20 records at a time, for example. Exactly. Uh, and better yet, if let's say I get halfway through the the payload and something cancels the call. Okay. So the client cancels the call, the connection gets terminated. Well, because of streaming and we're sending back data bit by bit by bit, uh, we can cancel those calls on the server uh, because now with traditional AJAX or uh, SignalR, if you make a call and you're you're getting a hundred thousand rows of data ready to come down. Mm -hmm. Well, if that sir, if that connection crashes, well, that data is still going to do its thing. It's going to try to send down, but it'll There's throw no an exception. Yeah. So with streaming, we can chunk the data in a more efficient way. Okay, so it'll still cancel it, but it'll be less data that's yeah. wasted. And SignalR also has some like magic underneath the scenes that can most efficiently send the data down. So if it's a, a slower connection, it might send one item at a time. If it's a faster connection, it might group 10, 15, 20 items at a time. Uh, it's really going to watch and see how that connection's working mm -hmm. and send data down the most efficient way possible. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Are you building applications with SignalR? I do. I Tell think me about an a cool application that you're building. Oh, well, it's uh, a lot of client work. Wow. Um, some stuff I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about. Oh, anything in that secret? Yeah, well, uh, so usually it's around features. It's okay. not not the entire application yeah. focused around SignalR. It's we're concentrating on individual features. Um, and normally it's uh, we load a view for, for a user uh, and some state changes and we need to notify the clients of, of these state changes. The simplest example, um, we have a client who has their their main website and then they have some forums and we want to notify users when someone posts a, a private message in the forums. Okay. So the the client's not actively pulling the forums. Uh, what we do is we do have a background process that every couple minutes checks to see if you have a new message. Uh -huh. And if you do, we notify every single instance of the website that you have open. Hmm. Uh, so it's just a push down from the server. And this is the key to SignalR versus just traditional AJAX or uh, other communication uh, protocol. With SignalR, my s uh, server can go do work and if there's something important that a user needs to know about, it can push that information down to an individual user. Hmm. Okay. And we talk about everything in terms of websites, but it's not limited to just web applications. Really? I could have a .NET console application. I could have a mobile app in Xamarin or, um, or in some other technology. There's a variety of clients built around SignalR. Okay, but it's still sending that data via HTTP, HTTP is it not? That's right, yeah, okay. it's all it's all WebSockets technically okay. coming the down. Client, uh, we think of HTTP as a web thing, Yeah, but that client could be a rich client, like a mobile application. That's right, and as far as the server's concerned, it's just a connection. So okay. the server doesn't have to do anything special for a mobile app 
versus uh, a web application. Very cool. Uh, where's uh, if somebody wants to get started using SignalR? Where do they go? Well, the best place is the Microsoft documentation. Uh, mm -hmm. So docs.microsoft.com. Uh, and I say that as a I've contributed a little bit of code to the docs. Oh, really? So don't don't judge it based off, <laughs> off my <laughs> feedback. But I will say the docs are the single best place to go because I've gone through the process of contributing to the documentation. Okay. I will tell you they are very rigorous about the quality and uh, how accurate the information is. Uh -huh. And it's really cool to submit documentation on how to use a feature and get feedback from the team about, well, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Mm -hmm. And it just makes the documentation better. Yeah, Microsoft so I, documentation just in general has gotten a lot better over the last few years. It has. The the teams, all the teams and individuals involved. Uh, and you all can contribute as well. It's open source. Yeah. You just create a, a pull request and you, you deal with some feedback from the team, but it's always good feedback. And it's mm -hmm. mostly, uh, did you... Uh, did you do things the Microsoft way? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, uh, is, is, is SignalR built into .NET Framework, or do I have to install some SDK to use it? It's a uh, part of uh, when you install the ASP.NET Core libraries. Okay. So if you create a new ASP.NET Core application, uh -huh. they have these meta packages that includes the 99% of what everyone needs to use, okay. or might need to use. Uh, SignalR is a part of that. Okay, so if you're installing Visual Studio, for example, that gives you the option to install, install ASP.NET Core. That's right, yeah. At that time. Yep. And then you're good to go. Absolutely. All right. So you can just start running with it. Are you still blogging? Uh, yeah, occasionally. Where? It's Well, I blog at kevgriffin.com. And you know what they say, you want to be, you want to have a regular blogging schedule. Uh -huh. So I, I've adopted once a year. <laughs> um, and that, that works really that's well a, for that's me. That's a hard commitment. Now you said that out loud. <laughs> I know. Well, I have already done my post for this year. <laughs> it's on, only January. What on SignalR streaming. 11th. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if I get two this year, I'm you, above then average. you can skip next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm just laughs> Kevin, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure, David. Thank you. SignalR is a technology that allows me to connect with my friends in real time.